payroll and HR has responsibility anywhere employee information is. Yes. Okay. Keep that in mind. That's a nugget. I hope you say that clip. Welcome to our podcast. It's about payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Welcome back, folks. Episode 94. It's about payroll. We're talking about New Year's. Going to give you some great advice about payroll in the New Year's. Be sure to check out next week's episode. We're going to learn some financial wellness. And before we get into this episode, how you doing, sir? How you doing, Walt, this morning? I'm good, man. Happy New Year. Happy you know, New Year, brother. Do you have any plans tonight, man? Right, how are you doing? Just chilling. I'm great, man. Thank you. I'm uh, just chilling with fam. Low key again. Christmas was really same thing. Just uh, quiet, nice little Christmas and mm-hmm. New Year's probably be the same. Nothing crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. That's it. Okay. Yeah, man. So yeah, look, we get right and talk about New Year's. What does New Year's mean to you? So New Year's for me is honestly. It's just become like another day, honestly, because it's really a time of fellowship and gathering and yep. having fun and having a good time and bringing in the new year with people that you love. Right. And uh, that's really what it means to me. You know, it's about the connection and the people, not really necessarily about the day for me. Right. Yeah. Nice. nice. Um, the f- holidays always turned had turned into just being able to be with fam, you know, yeah. having that fam- like I have have a big family and growing up, we used to just do a lot of things together, a lot of things together. And that became the fun part. And I don't even matter what care what the holiday is anymore. It was just that was the fun part. Yeah. When I was young, I, we tried to go out and after 12 came, I would meet, break out and do hang out. But I was really young. And then as a whole, New Year's, I try to not get caught up in the New Year, New Me deal. I'm really a firm believer that if there's a change in your life that you need to make, you need to make it as soon as you accept it, as soon as you realize that. Yeah. But again, I do like to take advantage of the fact that, hey, look, let's, it it should be the calendar year part of it. It is a time, it is a good time to refresh, to reevaluate. This episode is presented by Time Track Go the simply better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, TimeTrack Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. TimeTrack Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn an ordinary tablet into an employee time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a simply better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14 day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's T I M E T R A K Go.com or call 888 321 9922. Let's go. For payroll people, it's a reset of numbers, right? Yeah. If we take that if we take that mindset to personally, I, I would like to do some things, right? So this year, I do want to work on my health more, um, but I've already been doing that, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just a continuation of it, be more intentional. We talked about how time management is a challenge for us as a group, as for this. So time management is something I want to be more intentional about. Yeah. And family, man, just making sure that I'm making time for family and being present when I'm with them. What about okay. you? No, so for me, things that... that- I'm going to focus on, I'm already focused on some of these already, but losing weight, I had a back injury and for so long I've been nursing it and I've been hesitant to do work on it and stuff and I haven't played basketball since I messed up my back um, and that, that used to help me stay in a lot of shape when I was uh, younger. So I'm going to get back into that. I'm going to do start enjoying things that I like to do and I don't have to go hard playing basketball I can just just have a good time and and shoot and just play a quick a pickup game without exerting myself too much and yeah my back again you ain't going to the NBA (laughs) no no no, I'm not I want and then also I'm gonna start a new hobby man like I I've been thinking about learning another language I know some stuff but I'm not fluent in any other language like that like I am in English but I want to possibly learn another language or 
you know, just do oh, something. So you're you're not fluent in German. You just know no, some. No, I, I know oh, some. Okay, I, I'm you. not fluent in Portuguese, but I know some. I'm got not you. Fluent in Spanish, Portuguese. but I know some. Got yeah. you, got you, got you. Yeah. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So I, I know a little bit, but just want to really just I'm thinking about doing ASL, American Sign Language. I'm thinking about doing that this year, and just to do something new, yeah, and try something new that I haven't tried. I want to go skydiving. Oh, know? that I'm not I, doing. Good I luck. may do that. I may do that for my first We'll have to second. get you some business insurance before you do that. <laughs> no, because it's going to be tandem first. So I won't just be me. Don't matter. First jumping out of a plane. <laughs> that and then the last you thing. Get biz insurance. <laughs> and then the last thing is I want to definitely like meditate and pray more, man. I, I feel like I, I can get reconnected to the spiritual part of myself. And sometimes I feel that we can we can lose ourselves in our work. In our, yeah. our personal lives and forget that quiet time, that alone time, that meditation time where you can be grateful and you can pray or whatever your 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 thing is. So yep. that's for me. That's what I want to do. Yep. Dope. That's awesome, man. The other part is what should payroll pros be doing right now, thinking about the new year? I know a lot of us or a lot of payroll pros are, will have an exhaustion from the year end. I think about Gerard Hall and his thousands of W-2s that he he's leading the charge and his team, making sure that it goes out accurately. So it's a it's taxing. And share this, guys, folks out there ladies and gentlemen, and payroll, let us know what your challenges are for year end. Because I'm always curious, because some folks have really big challenge, like a lot, oh my God, it's so stressful. And some folks kind of just, hey, got a checklist and make sure I get through the year end and it's not as stressful. So I'd love to see the differences and understand the differences. I remember when I was in at the college level doing payroll, there is a particular program that's very common at college level. And, but it's super manual. That is stressful that year end because now yeah. you're in that, we got to reproduce our own W-2s. You got to make sure the numbers are right. You don't have the big box folks, like the big companies with the compliance built in and some dummy notifications built in to let you know, hey, this is off. It's that gets stressful when like the numbers are on you personally, to, then it's very stressful. And mm -hmm. you actually should be starting that process the, the beginning of the third quarter to start checking numbers and making sure that you're approaching directionally correct. Mm -hmm. But now as it resets and we we're in a new year, what should payroll be people be thinking about? You know, what? Before you up? move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, of on. course. So in that scenario that you just gave, right, they should also be mindful and be sure to ask for help if they need help. If, if you're really inundated and you have a lot of work on your plate, and say you have a small team and you need assistance and you need help, escalate those things. Just don't sit there and try to take it all on and put yourself under so much pressure and possibly force yourself to miss something. I know that we work on a, a lot of stress sometimes, mm -hmm. if not all the time in payroll, yeah. finance, HR, but there could be times where you don't have enough soldiers for everything yeah. right yeah and it, it, that might be the case especially with everything that's going on in the country with inflation and stuff so yeah just ask for help i just wanted to put that out there heck yeah it, heck it's, yeah you're in so important yep so you want to make sure that you have enough resources and people to help you get that job done so that's what i wanted to say absolutely no that's a good call out man thank you yeah. and I, i'm gonna i'll take you through the first three here and then we'll let walt close us out Okay. But we put it together, a, a quick checklist of what payroll folks could start thinking about in the new year. There are a ton of more things, right? This is just to get the blood flowing, guys, and do your research. We always want to give you enough to be dangerous, but always encourage you to stay researching, stay learning, because that's payroll folk. That's HR folk. We have to stay learning. I think everybody should stay learning, but yes. it's arguable. Um yeah. So the first one for me, check all your updates in the jurisdictions your company is in. Federal, of course, because if you're in the U.S., everybody's in the federal jurisdiction. Really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, you might have exemptions, but yes. you still have to report. Go look at the IRS website. Go look and see what 
legislation, what updates there are. Is there a new W-2 form? Is there a new W-4 form? These type of things. Go look at the circular E. What's yes. up? Yes. I'm getting the blood flowing. What do you got? Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> no, so great call out on this. was When I saw this note here for number one about checking all updates, that includes like the reason you want to do that and check those federal, state, and local things, because there are some rate increases. There may be rate increases or tax uh, notices out there that you get for your company, yep. and you may have to manually update that in yes. the payroll system yes. Yes. Right? or upload it so yes. the payroll provider could update yes. it for your company. Yep. Unemployment rates. Yes. All yep. those things are so important. And then if you don't update those things, your company is going to potentially under withhold. Yep. And then at the end of the year, they'll be like, hey, you still owe us this amount of money because you didn't, you only had it at this percentage and it was, it went up a right. percent. That's right. So and they're going to be like, hey, who, who was supposed to? No, it's a great call out. It made me think yeah. about something. Because, yeah, because when that happens, they're going to be like, who, who's supposed to update this? And then, oh, payroll, HR, yeah. like somebody, somebody dropped the ball because not, again, some big systems are doing it automatically now. And kudos mm -hmm. to that. Thank goodness. Because it's mindless. It should be. It's not just updated. It's a it's there's no argument about it. There's no thought about it. It just has to happen. But it reminds me, I don't know if you remember this, but one year in Texas, they did the update mid year. Yes. I but do they expected that. us to retro back to the yes. first of the year. So it was that. like, oh yeah, eh. Anyway, and then Texas was on me about all of the money that we owed them because we instantly had a retro payment due. Yes, it was just it, crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't our fault. Like, why? No, you, like, serious. no other vendor could possibly do that, but the government, yeah. right? They take so these, but these are the things you have to work out, or look out for. And I don't, I don't know. know if, I don't know if it was you that said it, but you said the government is our bullies. Heck, heck yeah! <laughs> if I didn't say it, about our grief wholeheartedly, <laughs> for sure. They always what bugs me out is that cliff. They always talk about the year end tax cliff. Yes, oh my goodness! Yeah. If this happens, then these rates are going to do this and that and do that. And I remember one year. I don't remember the specifics, but we were literally waiting for that cliff. And all the way through December to change some rates in the system for the new year. And it honestly, bro, it was like the, it came down to the last week of December. And of course, you got to work and do that. And, and it's what in the heck? Again, number one call out. Check for all these updates in the jurisdictions you're in. Federal, state, local, latest updates and forms, et cetera. Just make sure you're good. That your system yeah. is updated. You're ready for the calendar year. Think about 401k limits, things like yeah. that. that. There's a yeah. new limit for that. There's new wage bases. Talking about this makes me think about all the people that are going to call. Not all the people. High earners. High earners are going to call payroll and HR and say, my taxes went up, yes. right? And the reason they're saying that is because high earners, they hit their wage limit sometime in the summer Yep, Way for summer. contributions to, there, there is a max of Social Security and Medicare. No, normal people don't usually reach that max because we don't make that much money. But mm. at it, when in the summertime is usually when high earners stop. They max out on their contribution to Social Security and Medicare because it is mm -hmm. a percentage, but it's up to a max wage base. And 401k is the same thing. It's a it's no matter how you choose to contribute, the IRS still regulates how much you can contribute annually based yes. on your age. So these things they start hitting these maxes and they're like, and then it resets Jan 1. And then now all of a sudden. There's less money in their check when they get paid. And they're like, yo, oh, you messed up my check. No, yes. I didn't. Everything reset. And, and there's also new tax rates, right? Yeah. Not only make sure that the updates happened, but you may want to communicate that down to your people. Hey, folks, I don't know, whatever. This local went up. This state yes. went up. Yes. Please anticipate a higher rate of deduction because this went up or whatever benefit deductions yes. if your company yes. changed right communication yes. Yes. right yes yes and, and if you really want to go above and beyond like for the employee piece you can supply like our at our current nine to five that brian and i have 
we have a newsletter that goes out right, with helpful information that yep. everybody just sends information to. You can create something and have it plugged into that newsletter if your job yep. has those. Yep. Or if you want to, if they don't, and you have to send out the communication for your payroll or HR team, then you can just create a little sheet with different facts, inter interesting facts. Like, yep. for instance, that in 2024, the Social Security limit is going to go up to $168,600, right? Wage base. That, yeah, the wage base. And that's going to, that's an increase of 8400 from 2023. Right. So people are going to be have to be prepared to pay a little bit more tax yep. because they're, they're paying on a, a higher wage amount, right? So they're going to yep. end up paying more taxes. So yep. you can let people know, hey, if you make this or more, just be prepared if you're a high earner, yep. right? And you see, I, I, no, you look, you got me going now because mm -hmm. now we talk, if we're talking communication, I would even say target those folks, right? You, yes. as a payroll professional, as an HR professional, you know who's going to be impacted. Target those folks and just say, hey, guys, you guys are going to be impacted. You're going to be paying longer. But that's a, yeah, that's a great call out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to definitely do that. You never know. I, yes, target those people, but you never know who at your company, they may make less than that, but one of their spouse is a high earner and they get that information and they're sure. like, oh, hon. Helpful. Just, yeah. it's, a, it's a balancing agro communication, yeah. right? Because yeah. in, in HR, what we always talk about is, do we want to alert the folks who it doesn't impact to this information? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a balancing act, right? Yes, I get yes, what you're yes. saying from a pure yes. numbers and the kind of customer service, but in HR, but the the conversation that comes up in the conversations for communications every single time. Yep. The next one is speaking of communications, be proactive, right? Number two, mm -hmm. be proactive and plan for the year ahead about anything you learned from the prior year. For example, and I think that hopefully this year will be my first year. I'm going to be intentional about saving this list because we always come across during things during the year and we're like oh next year we're going to do it better right oh yeah. next year we're going to do it better but if you don't write it down if you're not intentional if you don't put it on your plan if you don't put it in your fore forecast you're not going to do mm -hmm. better the thing is going to come next year, you're going to forget again mm -hmm. and you're going to be like oh crap this is what i wanted to do better last year blah 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 yeah so be intentional be proactive be intentional for that I thought I had an example of what I wanted to do. Oh, but, but I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't write anything down. If I think of it, I'll let you know. Okay. And then the last one is what I like, and I think is going to be a big theme for me this year is, is education, employee education, training on applicable updates or policy changes for that impact them, right? Yep. Maybe there's some things that impact the greater whole, an unemployment rate that you got to update from item number one that we just said may not impact an employee directly. But Walt yeah. just said with the uh, wage base going up, that employee that impacts employees directly. You want to be intentional about the communication, the education of it all. Do they understand their paychecks? I urge payroll folks going into the new next 10 years, let's be more intentional about helping employees within our companies understanding understand. their paychecks. Un un right? so not just their paychecks. Like we... We as payroll professionals are sometimes a little bit, in some cases, more tech savvy mm -hmm. when it comes to these systems. And you then you yep. have employees, they can't even navigate their app yes. or their website. Yes. That that is yes. a part of that employee education. Yes. So absolutely. It's, it's not it's not just about yes, it is about the paycheck, and that's the main piece of it. But mm -hmm. there's other pieces to that you can help guide yeah. them. Like, how do Heck I request yeah. PTO? I was just how gonna say I time and intensity. How do I do that? <laughs> how do right. I do this? That's and, right. and you can be the ones to help educate them and just get ahead of the game and say, hey, employee oh, FAQs, yes. here you go. And send it out every year. Hey, yeah. you you do think about it. You only have to do it once or mm -hmm. twice. You can do it like the end of the year and mid-year. Yep. And say, hey, these are some updates. Here you go. Or you might want to, you want you might want a, a little more a little more frequent. You might yep. want to do that a little bit more frequent if you want. In some cases, depends on your setup, right? I, I suggest frequency if your stuff is like in shambles. If the sh if stuff is just mess, so I would suggest frequency to stabilize, and then you can find the right groove. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, that's a great good. Be intentional. That was number three for employee education, applicable update things that impact them training help them use systems better help them navigate the company better that you can help them with you can't help them with everything but the stuff uh, touch for payroll for hr like the systems that they're getting in right payroll and hr has responsibility anywhere employee information is yes. okay 
keep that in mind. That's a nugget. I hope you say that clip. I keep yes, and I'm going to repeat <laughs> it. Keep that in mind, right? Because payroll folk often complain about having to stretch out of their comfort, or I don't. We shouldn't have to do that. But if you apply mm -hmm. that rule, payroll and HR are responsible for anywhere there's employee information, right? Keep that in mind, and then you'll be okay. Oh, yeah. And don't be afraid to stretch. If they need you to stretch, learn something new. Me and Walt are here today in our current success and level of payroll because we never said no. It wasn't always good, but we've been we on never the battlefield. Said no. Right. We've been, on the, we've been on the battlefield. Roll up our sleeve, and we still yeah. on the battlefield, and we get into it, and we weren't scared to get into it. We weren't. Yeah. I was doing some work with a colleague the other day on Excel. And it's and it was tedious. It's tedious work. And at the end of the session, he was teaching me how to do something in Excel that he built mm -hmm. for us. And he's passing the knowledge over. And I'm like, at the end, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And he's like, yeah. I don't yeah. know many people that would call this awesome, Brian, but I definitely respect that you called it awesome. And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, this is my claim to fame, bro. Having to do this type of work is why I'm here today because I was never afraid. I never said, I was like, oh, you need me to do that, boss? Absolutely. Let's do it. So. Yeah. Anywho, man, take us out on these last three here. Yeah. Number four, you, this can be, for me, this could be tied to number two about being proactive and planning for the year ahead. You want to analyze payroll data from the prior year and report any interesting trends or discoveries. An example, what did OT look like? Where were there any, any earnings that any earning trend codes, any earning code trends, any earning trend codes, any earning code <laughs> trends, budgets and reviews, like forecasting. You want to find those things to see, hey, has there been a steady increase in OT over the yeah. year? What has been the average over month to month? Like you can do all those quick things and throw a pivot table in something and, and find the average by month if you want like for those ot this is an example right yeah and then yeah. budget reviews and sharing those things with accounting is always going to ask us the finance is always going to ask us to help them research certain things yep you can be ahead of the game imagine being ahead of the game and say oh i already, I already have this here you go boom look at this and if you already are prepared and do that yourself You'll train yourself to be prepared instead of reacting a little bit. And you may have some stuff already ready to go for them. So you can just hand it off like easy. Okay, but, so here, here are yeah. other few things that you could do on a recurring basis and not just at the beginning of a new calendar year. Audits. Yes, that's broad, but there's so many different audits that you could do, mm -hmm. right? You can audit to make sure... You got. You should do this stuff anyway to make okay. sure that your, okay. if you have multiple company codes, you want to make sure that their frequency and there, and there's been a change in those. You want to make sure, even though you may have already done it, just check in the in the back areas to to see that everything is set up correctly. Did we change this on the employee level? Did we do this on the employer level? There's so many different audits that you could do just to make sure because it's a part of one of Brian's things data hygiene for payroll, right? That'll help keep the data clean because as we know, garbage in, garbage out, out right? Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure, and this is a big one, I'm glad you put this one on here, is cybersecurity for personal identifiable, what was it, PII? Yeah. I keep wanting to go to personal protected information yeah, when yeah, you say yeah. the change. I yeah, keep yeah. wanting to go there, PII. You wanna make sure that cybersecurity is going to be a big focus or should be a big focus for your company and you as the payroll professional, right? You want to make sure that you're not just sending certain re reports and files all willy nilly, even if it's internal, because we're not, a lot of us are in a hybrid or remote work situation. So even if that email isn't internal, you may be on a different VPN or a different, your own internet or whatever. So you never know if you're, if that person's personal identifiable information that you have on that email or report is not being accessed because yeah. you might be on a, a site, some shady site at your home internet yeah. and you you leave it up while you're working and someone's ac accessing your company's data. That's why they say, even when you're at home, that you should close the browser. Even when you're at home, don't Absolutely. leave your browser up. Yep. 
You know, because if you have pump company files on your desk or in your drive, somebody could hack into your stuff and gain access to that. Another thing that you want to focus on is professional development, continue education, right? Yep. So we're never going to stop learning. We shouldn't stop learning, I should say, in payroll, right? We're going to we, we're going to have to make sure that we continue to educate ourselves because there's different things that are changing. AI is going to going to impact the workforce yes. and payroll and just in general. Yep. So we have to be prepared to really educate that educate ourselves on that and stay uh, as you know as things change, we need to make sure that we adapt and change as well. So professional development especially in these next coming years I feel are going to be really important for payroll professionals to to focus on. The, another one is the employee classification review. You want to speak more on this one? Because I, I was thinking of something else. I want to make sure that I was thinking the same thing. But you're talking about the type of employee here. Yeah. yeah. You're saying so if they're full time, are, are they full time? Do you have them set up to be benefit eligible in the system? Exactly. The, they, not, like, uh, are, salary non exempt, hourly, or vice versa. Hourly, yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like you want to make yeah. sure that, hey, it's again, it's a part of that data it's, hygiene. Yeah. And part of that which you should be doing on a recurring basis. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not payroll responsibility, if you see red flags, alert your HR counterpart. Hey guys, we noticed this. Is yes, this and one of the things that you and I, we've been, we worked for a few education places already. And there's a thing that's called 10 month, 12 month, 11 yes. month yes. employees. Yeah. There's even some colleges that we, when we were doing our, this calendar that Brian and I were working on, we found out that some universities have nine month employees, yep. nine month yep. contracts. So nine out of 12, nine over yep. 12. So what that means is that if it's 10 over 12, that means you get, you work 10 months, but you get paid over 12. And if you're 10 over 10, that means you only work 10 months and you're paid 10 months. Mm -hmm. So that's something to really make sure that you get that classification right, especially if your system and your payroll system handles that information. You want to make sure that is correct because those contracts can change year over year school year they can change I, they can agree to one this year and it'd be different next year i was out of college that it changed semester to semester i had to give Ooh. the and payroll was responsible for pushing those contracts out i wow. had to yelp i had it's payroll sat in hr mm -hmm. but they because it was payroll related and it, it it the document also put the pay schedule they were like oh pay that's enough pay stuff give it to payroll yeah thank goodness i had a separate teammate that did it but I had to manage that person and oversee the project. What anywho, we did we had to submit new contracts every semester. So semester, wow. yeah, twice a year we did it. So no, well, shoot, sometimes three times because then there was if there was a summer course, whatever. So it could mm -hmm. be more. But anywho. Yes. Yes. And then the one of the last things here in this section is to prepare and review tax records. Like you're gonna save yourself so much time and, and energy if you get the a jump on this right and because you just don't want to be reactive right because if you get some notices and you're not reviewing those things ahead of time like some systems have a place where you, they can point stuff out to you hey you need to research this research that just don't let that stuff build up and then you find yourself you getting a bunch of notices hey you guys haven't filed for this quarter this year you know, yes. whatever, and you're getting those things. So you want to make sure that you stay on top of that because it is really important because you can find your, your company getting in trouble in some cases and some litigation coming because you haven't reviewed and prepared those tax records. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then we have a season eight preview for you. We are very excited about season eight. In the last year, we learned that there are not a, enough young people in the payroll industry to backfill. So how do we get young people excited about getting yes. into payroll? Yes. That is going to be the focus of season eight. We're going to yep. we're gonna bring in some young and up and coming payroll professionals, maybe even some HR professionals, and we're going to talk to them and really pick their brain and see how you know, what excites them, right? We should tap in to the minds of the younger adults and really try to say, hey, what will get you interested in payroll? Got you know it. what I'm saying? So that's why we're going to have those guests on. Instead of saying, hey, you need to be interested in payroll, what would get you interested? 
is basically what I'm trying to say. So. I got you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. No, and that's yeah. part of it, man. And if you guys have ideas, please let us know with the company page on LinkedIn. It's about payroll. Reach out. How do we get young people excited? We need young people to start getting excited about payroll so that mm-hmm. they can get into payroll and backfill us in the next 10, 20 years. You know what I mean? And some of the things that we're going to work on through the season is show young folks the modernization of payroll, right? It's technology. It's strategy. Give them awareness. We're on social media. Like, all these different little ideas and we need more. We need more ideas. Like just to, like Walt just said, we need to pick their brain and get their input. What gets you excited about getting into a particular industry or what would about any industry? Like mm-hmm. how do we get your attention? You know what I mean? That's one of the yeah. reasons why I like Becky and her team, Becky Dillon and mm-hmm. team over at Accounts and Legal in the UK. They have a different dynamic. And, yeah. and like you said in the other episode, they don't seem stuffy. They don't mm-hmm. seem closed off like yeah. most people associate with accounting and something like that. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that because they have a really yeah. good dynamic there. Yep. And I think that's something that they really focus on is the people. And, it, you know, yeah. they're making TikToks with their teams about yeah. accounting stuff. And they're hilarious. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Stuff like that will probably attract the youth when Mm -hmm. because the youth right now is is, i think they're dumping everything to get to social media and there's probably opportunity there too you can do you can become a podcaster and an influencer but you do need to learn some payroll if you want to be a influencer of payroll and or find a new avenue hey do some payroll for a few years and then boom now you instantly have an opinion that's what season eight is going to be about. We'll have other things too. We always bring new companies on and talk to interesting payroll professionals and HR. Pro- Absolutely. That's still going to happen. But the overarching theme of season eight is going to be how do we get young people involved? And then it'll probably remain something that we talk about throughout the years. Like cybersecurity has become a mainstay in our conversation. Getting yeah. young people involved is going to become that mainstay as, as well because the numbers are just not there for us for backfill. And mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting to try to get young people involved. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that is season eight. We're really excited. I'm excited. And that's it, man. That's, that's I think that's it for today. Yep. Happy New Year, everybody. By the time you see this, we'll already have been in the New Year. Hope you enjoyed yourselves and I hope you were with lots of loved ones and had a great time. Word. Word. Happy New Year, folks. We love you. Peace. Before we sign off, here are a couple of quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. Thank you for being a part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until next time, keep learning keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.